The Bible never speaks of a believer in Christ who has not been baptized. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and this is a Bible study in search of the Lord's way. Today we're going to explore what the Bible teaches about baptism. So stay with us for an exciting and important study. I know the Lord will find a way. In all the hurry and hustle and confusion of modern living, the Lord has the way. We believe that the Bible is the revelation of His way. We invite you to join us in search of the Lord's way with Mac Lyon. Today's speaker is Phil Sanders. Hello, I'm Phil Sanders, and we're here to search God's Word for the Lord's way. God desires that we believe, love, and obey Him. We want to please God because we love Him. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 1 and verse 10, If I were still trying to please man, I wouldn't be a servant of Christ. And that's why we ask what God says about every moral and spiritual matter. We're involved in a search for the truth, for the Lord's will. We want nothing more and nothing less. And we pray that you too are seeking God's truth. And that's why you've tuned in today. We want to be a part of your life each week. So give us that opportunity. Several years ago, a man far from God called me on a Friday night to come and study the Bible with him. He said that when he was a young teenager, he was baptized in a denominational church. But years later, he learned that what he did as a youth and what the Bible teaches about baptism were different. This left him confused, and he wanted to know what the Word of God said. He desperately wanted to be right with God. You see, he was in poor health, and the doctor told him that if he didn't change his ways, his heart would give out and he would die. He remembered promises that he had made many years before, and he wanted to do what was right. Well, I met him the next morning, and we studied from Scripture what the Bible says about Christian baptism. I wanted to share with you what we studied that day. So today and next week, we'll study about what the Bible says about baptism. Now, if you want the details of this study, we offer the information on this program free. If you'd like a printed copy, a CD of our study, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083, or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call our toll-free telephone number. That number is 1-800-321-8633. Now, we also stream this program on our website at searchtv.org. The Edmund Church will now worship in song, and then we'll read from Matthew 3, 13 to 17. Our reading today from God's Holy Word comes from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 to 17. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. 
But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answering said to him, Permit it at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. After being baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and lighting on him. And behold, a voice out of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. That's a reading from God's holy word. Let's pray together. O oh, Father, help us always to do what is fitting and right in our service to you. And Father, may we be obedient to your will in baptism always. In Jesus' name, amen. centuries people have debated the subject of baptism. We're going to focus on what the New Testament teaches about Christian baptism. We want to know how baptism fits with our conversion to Jesus Christ, how baptism fits with becoming a Christian, and we're going to study through the New Testament. We're limited in time, so we'll move fast and only make the most important points. In Matthew 3, Jesus considered it important to be baptized. He left his home in Nazareth and walked many miles to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. John was surprised at Jesus coming for baptism since John's baptism was according to Mark 1 and verse 4 and Luke 3 and verse 3. It was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Well, Jesus has never sinned and he didn't need forgiveness. John said that he needed baptism from Jesus. But Jesus said, let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness, and it's the right thing for us to do. Luke 7, verses 29 to 30, says that anyone who rejected the baptism of John was rejecting the purpose of God. Well, if this is true of John's baptism, it's even more true of the baptism of Jesus Christ. Matthew 3, verses 16 and 17 says, And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. God approved of this baptism. Notice that after baptism... Jesus went up from the river. The water baptism of Jesus took place down in the river. And John 3 and verse 23 says that John also was baptizing at Enon near Salem because water was plentiful there. That is, there was much water there and people were coming and being baptized. In his last words recorded in Matthew, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. Now, the apostles made disciples by two means. First, by baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And second, by teaching them all that Jesus commanded them. The idea of a non-baptized disciple or Christian is never contemplated in the New Testament. The Lord said in Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, two things are necessary to respond to the gospel and to be saved. Faith and baptism. It's not right to say that one is necessary, but the other is optional. The Lord included both. In John 3 and verse 3, Jesus told Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, Well, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered in verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot, cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, every writer in the early church, all of the early church fathers, agreed that this new birth of water and the Spirit in John 3 and verse 5 is water baptism. In fact, no one said otherwise until the 1500s. The idea of a person being born again before he is baptized is simply not found in Scripture. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, Peter and the apostles preached the first gospel sermon. In the sermon, Peter made a charge against the people. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Well, Acts 2 and verse 37 to 39 says, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. These guilty people ask what they should do because they felt the sting of their sin of crucifying the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter said they needed to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus in order to have the forgiveness of their sins and they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Both repentance and baptism precede God's forgiveness. Some say one ought to be baptized because their sins are already forgiven. But this idea ignores the context and must be read into the passage. They're not asking what to do after they are forgiven, but what to do to be forgiven. Remember the phrase, for the forgiveness of sins. Well, it was used of John's baptism in Mark 1 and verse 4 and also in Luke 3 and verse 3. But it's also found in Matthew 26 and verse 28 where the Lord says, For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus poured out his blood so that people might have forgiveness. Now, Peter was there when Jesus said this just 50 days before. It's not an accident that he uses this very phrase in reference to repentance and baptism. Some recent translations makes Acts 2.38 even clearer. God's word to the nations, for instance, says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven. The New Revised Standard Version says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. The International English Bible says, Change your hearts, and each one of you must be immersed by the authority of Jesus, the Messiah, so that your sins may be forgiven. Now, Acts 2, verses 40 and 41 shows this even stronger. 
It says, And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Those who were told to save themselves were baptized. Now apparently, 3,000 of these people understood this message and gladly did what Peter told them to do. They understood what to do and why they needed to do it. Next, we looked at Acts 8 and verse 12. The Bible says, But when they believed Philip as he preached good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. They baptized men and women, but not infants or small children. They baptized people who were old enough to believe in the name of Jesus Christ and to repent. In Acts 5 and verse 14, the Bible tells us that the believers were added to the Lord both men and women. The words for men and women speak of males and females of full age and stature. They could believe and they could repent they could responsibly make decisions for themselves. Acts 8 also tells of Philip and the eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch. This eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Well, in his chariot, he was reading from the book of Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to join the eunuch in his chariot, and Philip ran to him and asked, Do you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch replied, Well, how can I unless someone guides me? And the place that he was reading is Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. Acts 8 and verse 34 to 38 says this, The eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does this prophet speak, of himself or of someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning from the scripture, he preached Jesus to him. And as they went along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Look, water! What prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And he ordered the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip as well as the eunuch, and he baptized him. Now, Philip preached the gospel of Jesus to the eunuch. And apparently, preaching the gospel meant preaching baptism. Because as soon as Philip finished, the eunuch asked, what prevents me from being baptized? They both went down into the water. Philip baptized him, and they came up out of the water. Now, whatever baptism is, it happens when people go down into water and before they come up out of it. Baptism, that word, is actually a very specific term, and it means immersion. Some translations no longer use the English word baptism anymore. They translate the Greek word baptizo as immerse. Baptism is a dipping, an immersion in water. Baptizo is never used to speak of sprinkling or pouring. Other words in Greek describe those actions. The word for sprinkle is rantizo, and the word for pour is keo. Philip didn't do either one. He immersed the eunuch. In Acts chapter 9, we find Saul of Tarsus who persecuted the church relentlessly. And on his way to Damascus, he was blinded and encountered the Lord Jesus. Verses 4 to 6 say that he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and it will be told you what you must do. Now, not one word of this account of Saul on the road suggests that he's saved. In fact, we know that he is not saved at this point. He's got to go to Damascus and be told what he must do. Verse 9 says that Saul is without sight for three days, and he neither ate nor drank. Saul was in shock. You see, he had been persecuting Jesus, who really was the Son of God and risen from the dead. And though blind in sight, he had his spiritual eyes open to the truth. He was zealous for Judaism and thought he was doing the right thing to persecute the church. 
But Saul of Tarsus was wrong. In 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15, he calls himself the chief of sinners. So in verse 11, Paul is in Damascus, and he's on a house on a street called Straight, and he's praying. Paul must have prayed more fervently than he had ever prayed in his whole life. He was blind, and he was humble, and he was penitent for all the evil that he had done to the church. This broken man desperately wanted to be healed and to be right with God. But he must wait to do uh, what he will be told. You see, even fervent prayer didn't bring about the washing away of his sins. We'll find that out. Now, this might shock you, but stay with me on this. Some people ask, uh, uh, ask people to say a, print, a sinner's prayer with them. You know, that's how they think that they're saved. And they promise them salvation when they pray. But Acts 9 says absolutely nothing about a sinner's prayer bringing salvation and freedom from sin. In fact, Saul is not yet saved, and we can know this from the Bible. If you open your Bible with me to Acts 22 and verse 13, Paul tells of Ananias who came, uh, Paul said, who came to me and standing near said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. Now, some say the word brother means Saul is a Christian. But Ananias is just referring to him as, fellow, as a fellow Jew. You see, Jews called each other brother. And then verses 14 to 16 says, And at that very time I looked up at him, and he said, The God of our fathers has appointed you to know his will and to see the righteous one and to hear an utterance from his mouth. For you'll be a witness for him to all men of what you've seen and heard. Now, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Now Ananias told Saul that he must be baptized and wash away his sins, calling on the name of the Lord. If Saul was saved on the road, or Saul was saved by prayer, he wouldn't need to wash away his sins in baptism. Now at the Sanders house, we wash dirty clothes. We don't wash the clean ones. The washing of baptism is necessary because our souls need cleansing by the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray that every person will take seriously the things that we've talked about today. And Father, may we be obedient to your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Many refer to being baptized as a work. It is indeed a work, but not a work that we do. You see, we're saved by grace through faith, according to Ephesians 2 and verse 8. Baptism is not something that we do, but something we choose to have done to us. The command is to be baptized. Now, the one baptizing does the work, and the one being baptized is acted upon. And just as the one baptizing does the physical work, so God does the saving in a spiritual work or act. You see, God is the one who washes away your sins. 
God is the one who forgives and causes us to be born again. God is the active one in baptism, and we are the passive ones receiving His kindness and grace. Baptism is never something that's done all by itself. Without exception, those who were baptized in the New Testament first heard the gospel preached and believed it. Baptism without faith is useless. This is why we don't baptize people who do not or cannot believe. The Lord also wants us to confess our faith before others. In addition to faith, the Lord also expects us to turn our lives around in repentance. We must leave sin and give our heart in service to the Lord. When people have confessed and repented, then they're ready to be baptized. This is the time that God washes away their sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we'll have more to say about these matters next week. We hope that today's study of Christian baptism has blessed you or challenged you to think. If you want a free printed copy or CD of this message, mail your request to In Search of the Lord's Way, Post Office Box 371, Edmond, Oklahoma, 73083. Or send an email to searchtv at searchtv.org. Or you can call the search office toll free at 1-800-321-8633. Now our programs appear on our website at searchtv.org. We offer Bible correspondence courses that will help you to learn more about God and His will for your life. If you'd like to have one, just let us know. We'd be glad to send it to you, and they're free. We also offer free study sheets that go along with our programs. You can download them before the program uh, on our website, or you can call and request them. Now, we won't hassle you for money or put you on a list. We don't do that. We do ask that you please worship with a Church of Christ in your area. You see, they're the reason that we don't ask for money. And if you're looking for a church home, call us. We'll be happy to help you find one. Now, churches of Christ love and they want guests. And you'll be glad that you went and worshiped with them. We'll be back next week, Lord willing. So keep searching God's Word with us and tell a friend. God bless you and we love you from all of us at In Search of the Lord's Way.